Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. I'm here today with my latest project. This project is my first video in a series called Beyond the Card. So while we've been making some absolutely fabulous cards and they're wonderful to make, I did want to kind of explore other projects that we could do with our paper. And so this is the first one. It is a treat ornament box. So this is the idea that I had with regards to an advent calendar that I'll be making and not necessarily your traditional calendar because all of these ornament boxes, obviously this is number one. <laughs> so all of these boxes will be hanging on the Christmas tree. So I thought that could be a different way. It's a bit of a scavenger hunt as well. So uh, it should be, should be interesting, but when you pull the parts to, apart, then we have a little area for a small treat. So hence the treat ornament box. I can just pull that ribbon back to get the two sides together. And there we have it. So today's project, I found it on a YouTube channel, The Paper Pixie, and she has got some amazing videos. So if you wanna hop on over, obviously she's got this video as well, some other, as, well as some others. And the paper that we're using today is the paper from A Very Merry Christmas from Cartabella. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It's a retro Christmas pack. So if you are, I want to say like in your 40s, you'll probably feel very nostalgic looking at this or older. <laughs> but anyways, it's just, it's a beautiful paper pack. And I do have a video if you look on... Uh, some older videos. I do have one that goes through this particular pack. So if you're interested, um, I do have some in stock. So if you're interested, you can certainly purchase it. So I'm going to set this aside and kind of go through some of the paper that we are going to need. So the paper today, I've gone with a red base and this is cut at eight and a half by five and a quarter. And then we have a few small, uh, small pieces of the designer paper, and you've got two pieces that are cut at one and a half by one and a half, and four pieces that are cut at one and five eighths by one and five eighths, and that's pretty much it for the paper. So it's pretty simple in that regard. We will be doing some cutting and some scoring. So as far as tools go. Uh, you're going to need a ruler, a bone folder. If you happen to have a scoreboard and a paper trimmer, all the better. But I will show you, you know, certainly how you can get away without having those tools. Um, scissors. I've also got a smaller piece, a smaller pair of scissors as well. And you will need a hole punch. This one punches holes, I believe they're an eighth of an inch, which is pretty standard. So if you have a hole punch, I wouldn't worry too much about the size. And then I've done some a little bit of decorating with some foil and another piece of like shimmer cards, excuse me, shimmer card stock, as well as uh, the Holly Jolly stamp from the uh, Christmas, a lumberjack Christmas. That's the stamp set that came from that. So kind of dipped into a bunch of different things here. <laughs> so I'm gonna set this stuff aside and we'll get to scoring our base cardstock. Okay, so we're gonna get out our scoreboard and then we're gonna start with a five and a quarter across the top. We are gonna score at one and three quarters And then we're going to go over and score at three and a half. Then we're going to flip over the card. And this just simply is because the way we're going to score some of the next parts is the way you're going to be folding it. It, it makes it easier. So we're going to do three quarters and then we're going to flip over the card stock. And then we're going to score at two and a half. We're going to score at four and a quarter. Six. 
and then we're going to flip it over one last time and score at seven and three quarters. Okay, so we can set this aside. We are done with our scoreboard. And there you should have a bit of a grid pattern. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we need to add some score marks that will allow that, that um, diagonal fold. Sorry, words. Apparently a little bit difficult this evening. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do then is these two boxes is what we're really going to concentrate on and we're going to be scoring through those two boxes so where the score lines meet you're just going to put your bone folder there or your scoring tool and you're putting your ruler so that it goes right across and it meets up with the next score line at the bottom so we're going to do a couple of passes because you want that score line nice and visible without going through your paper. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite box. And we're gonna start at the top and go to the bottom. So this is what you end up with. You've got uh, two score lines that make a mountain, I guess. So we're gonna spin the card around and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the opposite side. So again, Put your bone folder where you're starting, where your starting point is, line up your ruler to where you want to go, and then we're going to make a couple of passes there. Get that score line in, and then do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay. Perfect. So this is what you end up with. You have two parts on either side that have the score marks that will allow us to fold that in nice and neatly. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna burnish our folds. So for this side, we are going this way. We're gonna do both of our ends. We're folding those upwards or inwards and we're gonna Burnish that with your bone folder, flip that over, and then the next folds will be going inwards again. And again, we're making sure we have everything lined up. Scoring our straight, or sorry, not scoring, burnishing our straight score lines right now. Okay, so this is what you'll end up with. A little bit of a, I guess, like a barn roof, <laughs> if you uh, want to call it that. And then we're going to score the, or sorry, not score. My goodness. Today is one of those days. I'm going to score these straight lines. Make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Perfect. So the next two things that we're going to be doing is we're going to we're going to take the sides of the the each side that has those diagonal score marks and we're just going to pinch very lightly to get the to get it started to get the fold started. I'm going to do the same thing on this side using my fingers from below to kind of poke through. But then what you ultimately are going to be able to do is fold that inwards. Let me fold that because we haven't done our other side. So you're going to be able to fold it like this and this way you can get that nice and crisp with your bone folder like that. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side and that will be, sorry, I flipped it over because where I find, you'll notice that when you score, You'll end, you'll end up with a divot on one side and a bit of a bump on the other. So when I'm, when I'm actually folding those on the score lines, I'm folding so where the, the mountain is, it's just, it makes it just a little bit easier. So then we can fold that inwards as well. And then we're going to burnish that as 
So now we have this. Okay, we're well on our way. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a few strips and this way um, we're cutting out some of the bulk that could certainly happen if you started folding this in and trying to make your ornament. So we're gonna cut on the score line. So we cut past this first score line to the second one and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, so that'll give you three flaps. We spin the cardstock around and we're gonna do the exact same thing to the opposite side. Cutting on the score lines all the way to the second. So then we got two, we got three flaps on either side. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut away some of the, the ex excess, the extra, and that's gonna get rid of that, again, it's gonna get rid of some of that bulk. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can, if you wanted to, you can fold these two middle. The two middle ones we don't wanna to touch at all. The what we're gonna be cutting away is a little bit of either of these two and a little bit of these two. So basically what you could do, one of the things that you could do is you could always take out your paper trimmer. What you would do is you would line up this middle piece, this fold line, you would line that up to the half inch and then you would put this down and you can cut these two off. So I'm gonna do that for this side, okay? So that's what you end up with, two little tabs. Or you could definitely use your ruler. So on the ruler, I would just take, I was gonna say I had a pencil, but my pencil is gone now. That's fine. So you make a little mark at the half inch and I'm measuring from this, this score line right here, I'm measuring a half inch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And you can just go simply across with your ruler, make a line. So this is certainly doable if you don't have all these fancy, fancy tools. And then you're just gonna cut that off. And then we're gonna cut that off. Okay, so that's, that's this is what you'll end up with. So we can set aside our two little bits that we just cut off. Then the next thing I would do is you're gonna miter off these little tabs that we just made. And this way, ends up with a nice clean look to it. You don't have to worry about, you know, exact like things coming out and, and not lining up properly. Just makes it look a lot neater. Okay. Move those bits aside. Okay, and then the next thing that we're gonna do, again, we're in bulk removal right now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna push the, the diagonal folds that we made. We're gonna be cutting away some of this excess because again, we don't need all of this on the inside. It's gonna take away from what you can put in it. So we do wanna make sure that we get rid of some of that bulk. And basically what you're gonna do is you're aiming for about a half inch give or take. If you would like to measure, you can certainly measure. If you wanna eyeball it, which is exactly what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna eyeball this, and we're just gonna cut right across. And so that's gonna leave us with little tabs on the side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna repeat that on the side, on the other side. Okay. So here we have it. This is our box, not yet put together, but it's our box. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm using some of my score tape and I'm gonna be putting the score tape down on the tabs. And this is 
one thing that um, I love about the, the score tape, you don't need scissors because that can like the, the adhesive on the other, on the other side, like on the score tape can certainly start gumming up your scissors after a while. So this is really super handy. And so the next step we're going to do is we are going to, Oh, you know what? Before we start putting together our box, I almost forgot to put these little holes at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we need to put two um, holes at the very top to get our, to thread our ribbon through. So I'm going to bring out my ruler one more time. And what you're trying to do is as best as possible is you're trying to get your holes kind of in the middle of this pa this panel. And so in order to do that, you are going to make a mark at five eighths and you're gonna make a mark at one and one eighth. It doesn't matter if you've made a mark with a pen or a pencil, it doesn't really much matter because you're gonna be aiming for it with your hole punch. So you're gonna hold these two pieces together and we're gonna punch our holes. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now we can move on and peel a bit of our, our score tape. So this panel right here, this little tab that we just peeled off, we're gonna be adhering that. Ooh, I'm getting way ahead of myself today and I don't even know why. We're definitely going to want to make sure that we put these on before we start making our box because then it's going to be decidedly different. So I apologize. So before we start taking off any of the score tape, let's get these panels down. So the four, uh, four panels that are the one and five eighths by one and five eighths are going to go right down the center. And then the other two panels that we have left over, those are going to be cut into diagonal. Uh, they're going to be cut diagonally to form triangles, and then we can lay those down in the on these two bits. Well, I guess they're four bits now. Okay, so for these, again, you can take out your paper trimmer if you have one, or just do your best to align that right on. The, the the diagonal. So you're, I've lined up one point with my scissors and I kind of stick it in there. So then now I can kind of just move down really quickly. It's not, these aren't, these aren't um, super large pieces. So it does make it easier to get that cut down. And then we put these in on these side panels, these little triangular side panels. I feel like a lot of my cards recently have had a lot of triangles. There's been a lot of cutting squares in half. <laughs> and there will be more to come. I've got a couple of projects that are on the go and we'll be using some of the techniques um, that we've already explored in terms of our card making but they're going to be used for projects. So it'll be interesting to get those done. Okay. So that goes there and then the last piece. Okay. And thankfully we haven't glued with our one little tab that has no adhesive backing or the, not the protective layer on top. We haven't managed to, I haven't managed to, um, dip my hand in it. And that's kind of surprising because that's normally something that happens. Okay. So getting back to where I was before, what you're going to do is you're going to fold this behind this flap and you're going to adhere that. So I use some really thin t tape. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's right up to that score line. So I'm going to do another piece there and so that way it's nice and secure okay so you're going to get this all lined up to where you're happy with it and then press you can press from the inside and that's going to be the start to our box so i'm going to continue on i'll 
continue the same process, I am going to lay down some extra adhesive just so that it's up to that score line. Doesn't much matter. It's just the way I placed it. But when you're placing your score tape, put it near closer to the score line, this score line. And that way you've got a nice, a nice sealed secure <laughs> side to your box, just like that. Okay. So this was another reason why I used the score tape on the sides is with the liquid glue, while great, you would have had to have sit, sat there for a little bit while the glue dried. And I wanted this to be a little bit of a faster project. But already we can see how this is coming together so cute. I cannot wait to get the rest of these done. So anyways, the next step <laughs> is your ribbon. And you can go with, I have an organza ribbon here. I think this was the other ribbon that I was thinking of, but I didn't quite like the, the differences in the red, but that was just me. You can use green. You can use whatever color you'd like. And I will put I'm having a hard time feeding this through now. Oh my word. It is, it has been a day. <laughs> it's been a day. Okay. I'm going to try cutting that a little bit more sh sharply there. So the point, there we go. So I'm going to be pretty generous with the ribbon just because my, you know, I have to make a bow at the end, so it's not going to be exactly a, a huge bow. So <laughs> I'm going to give myself lots of ribbon to work with, but uh, should be able to there we go get this done. Sweet. One more. And you can always round off these corners if you'd like. I have a crocodile somewhere, but since I didn't take it out, I'm not going to be too worried about it. You can certainly um, round off these corners if you have any kind of punch that has that kind of thing or a crocodile. You can leave them. I've left them square for both of these, but you could certainly even just take your scissors and miter off the corners if you so wish. Sorry, I got distracted and I forgot to put this through the next, the last hole. Okay, come on, work with me. Oh, jeez, there we go. Not very helpful when I don't have my glasses on and I really can't see <laughs> if I'm even close. There we go. All right, so there we go. And what you want to do, you definitely want to make sure that you have enough ribbon so that this can open up nicely and you have lots of space. So I like to leave it like this. And while I have it open, I'm just going to snip part of the ribbon off and then I'm going to make my little bow and then I'm going to close it. And that way I know for sure I have enough ribbon to open the box fully or for the recipient to open the box fully. And this way there's no need to have to completely undo everything. Okay. Actually, that was, that was pretty good on my first try. <laughs> and then we're going to pull from the back end. And this is what, this is what creates that loop. Okay. So we're just going to get rid of the excess. A nice little there and then like I said you before you can decorate it with whatever it is that you want I've chosen on this box to decorate it I had a little holly jolly stamp from the lumberjack Christmas stamp set and I just used some red foil with a little bit of shimmer paper so that is the project for today 
I thank you so much for stopping by, for visiting with us, with me, <laughs> and my personalities, apparently. <laughs> Um, but I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, especially when it comes to our Beyond the Box series. Thank you so much again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe, stay well. Bye!